Nobody's Dog. Bobby was a lonely little boy because he lived a long way from the town and no other little boys lived near him. His granny would have sent him to school but she had nobody to send to take care of him on the way. So Bobby played at home alone. Now one day when Bobby was playing in the field behind the house, a big, ugly, dirty dog came slinking through the hedge. And when Bobby said, Hello, old fella, it looked at him in a frightened sort of way. But Bobby had two biscuits in his pocket for lunch, and he broke a bit off one and held it out. And all in a minute, the big dirty dog was licking Bobby's hand and face and scrunching his biscuits, turn and turn about. And Bobby was patting it and rubbing behind its ears and calling it names which made it feel all glad and happy. Now after that day, Bobby was never lonely. For always when he ran down to the field, the big dog was waiting. Bobby called him Chum and gave him his lunch biscuits and bought bones and bits of meat as well and they played the most exciting games. Chum was sometimes an elephant and sometimes a horse. Bobby jogged round the field on his back or went exploring in the long grass which he called the jungle. And Chum loved him with his big brown eyes and took care of him. Now Bobby did not say a word to anyone about his playmate for Chum had no collar on and Bobby knew that dogs without collars belonged to nobody and were taken away by the policeman. But Granny wondered why Bobby only came in when the bell rang for meals and one day she went out to see. Now just when Granny came in through the field gate Bobby saw a little yellow frog hopping close to his feet and he thought if he could catch it he would give it a home in his very own little garden. So very carefully he reached out a hand to take hold of it but hoppity skip away went the frog and hoppity skip after it went Bobby. They hoppity skipped across the field till the little yellow frog went splashity splosh into the pond and before Bobby could stop himself he went splashity splosh into the pond after it. Poor Granny ran across the field as hard as she could go crying, oh dear, oh dear, what shall we do? But before she reached the pond Chum was racing from the other end where he had been burying a bone. Straight into the water he leapt and as Granny came up, he seized Bobby's jersey between his strung white teeth and swam with him to the shore. Granny hugged Bobby and the dog together till she was nearly as wet as they were. Oh, Granny, Bobby gasped between his chattering teeth. You won't give him to the policeman, will you? He hasn't got a collar on. Then we'll put one on him, Granny said firmly, and he shall be our dog and they went home with Chum dancing beside them. So the collar was bought, and nobody's dog became Bobby's very own dog. But it was not until a day or two later that a great idea came to Bobby. Granny, he said, couldn't a dog that saved a little boy from being drowned take care of him going to school? I am sure he could, Granny answered. So the next Monday morning Bobby went to school holding firmly to Chum's collar with one hand and Chum passed the dogs they met with a look which said proudly Can't stop, I am taking care of my master. Neither Bobby nor Chum was ever lonely after that.